Now with today's lesson is Dr. Lester Sumrall. We, we, are, just, we are so excited to, to see you and, and to talk to you about the great things of man and the great things of eternity and, and, uh, and to talk to you about things that will, will help you. We call it pertinent truth. You know, you know, there's historic truth that is truth, but it will not change your life. You know, it is true that there was a man named George Washington. How many believe that? You see, you have faith in that. And it's true, but it has nothing to do with your spiritual life right now, you see. But when it comes to the blood of Jesus Christ, that has everything to do with your spiritual life. So there's two kinds of truth. And, and uh, you, could, you, could, you could go through the whole uh, appendium of truth and you would discover that it, it is relative to two areas. And one is where it is, I wouldn't want to call it ecstatic truth, but it is, it's historic truth. It, you could also call it relative truth. It, it is there, it is true, but what does it do for you? But when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, or it comes to the, uh, to the anointing of God upon your life, th these are truths that have to do with your well-being. And if you don't understand those truths, then you will not be what God wants you to be. And so you can be ignorant in, in some areas and, and be all right. But there are certain areas you, you must not be ignorant in. I hope that everybody has studied their, their teaching syllabus. And I, I hope that, the, that, you know, that, that what's in here will not be an end. You know, when some people graduate from high school, they, they, they close the books. And, 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 and did you know they also give them away? They say, well, I'm through with them. Boop. Now that's when you need to go through them again. That's when you need another review. If you don't maintain what you know, if you don't maintain what you know, it slides right through your fingers, you know? And so what we know must become workable and usable in our lives. And that, that's what we want these studies on, the battle for immortality. God spoke to my heart, the reason that we prepared these for you, and, and said, that the greatest battle that man has ever known, he is engaged in it right now, and that the battle that every major sin in society was a blow at the immortality of man. The devil doesn't want you to arrive home in heaven. He wants to destroy you in hell if he can. And uh, though we only speak mostly about the positive immortality, there is a negative immortality also. If you don't live forever with God, you're going to live forever with the devil. And that's bad living. <laughs> that's bad neighbors. How many believe that? I'm not talking about your neighbors next door. I'm talking about somebody else now. Don't get it mixed up. Communism, uh, we're beginning on page 104. Uh, communism relative to immortality. Communism deals a blow at immortality. Uh, possibly communism is the greatest blow against immortality in our times. Because as of this moment, possibly half of the total human race is, is under either the complete dominance or the relative dominance of communism. And, and communism, maybe above everything, hates the immortality of man and degrades man into being something that he is not. And, and tries to get man to believe that there is no one up there. And that there's uh, no judgment that he'll ever reach, that it's all here on the face of this earth. And so we must, in our spirits, first understand Bolshevism, and then we must, every opportunity we have, press against it. Whoever seeks to believe it or receive it, to give them the reasons why they shouldn't. Really, communism is a spirit. If you had three communists in this room tonight, they'd produce a whole different spirit in this whole building. I've been in the room with them. I know what I'm talking about. And so it is a spirit. I've traveled 5,000 miles through Russia, and it is a spirit. And it is a spirit against man. You can't touch God. They hate God, but they can't get to him. God's going to get to them pretty quick now. Bolshevism was born 
in the rebellious heart of Karl Marx, a man with a perverted mind. And that rebellious hatred against God was transplanted into the heart of Vladimir Lenin, who became a student of Marxism, which is communism and Bolshevism. And then it was transferred again into what we would call the bloody heart of Joseph Stalin, who actually killed millions of human beings who disagreed with him of his own people, the Russian people. And he became the, the one who made atheistic Russia the nation that it is today. It then went into Mao Zedong of China and perverted the largest nation on the face of the earth, the Chinese nation. And then from there it went to Ho Chi Minh and caused great sorrow to this country. Great sorrow to this country. And in, in Vietnam. And then it came closer to home and emboldened itself in the heart of a man named Castro, still the dictator in Cuba. This is a deadly blow toward immortality. The creature of God that God called Adam. It is not an economic or political war only, but it is deeply involved in moral and more deeply in spiritual warfare. I can't tell you the oppression that I felt in the concentration camps of, of Siberia. Just can't tell you the oppression. You just felt like you were going to die all the way across that country because of the depression that's there. So it's not just an economical and political situation that we're dealing with. We're dealing with a, basically a spiritual warfare against every living being, every eternally existing person on the face of this earth. Communism would like to destroy your immortality. The great pro, uh, psalmist uh, David said these words in Psalm uh, 14 and 1. It said, the fool has said in his heart. Some people are more than fools because they don't see it in their heart. They say it out loud, which is one step further. The fool has said in his heart. What did he say? There's no God. Now, God said you had to be a fool to say there's no God. You say, why? Because of the evidence. How are you going to create sublime beauty like this without a designer? You, you can't build a building without a designer. You can't build a bridge without a designer. How can you build the most beautiful thing there is without a designer? You're going to say that that happened, but the bridge had to have, be designed? It shows you how stupid the human mind can degrade itself, you see. God said the fool has said inside of him, there is no God. God responds and says, those people are corrupt. They that say that are corrupt. Now, you better believe God. Any man that says there isn't a God, you better watch your pocketbook too. They have done abominable works. You can see that in Cuba. You can see it in China. You can see it in Vietnam. You can see it in Russia. And in that group of people that call themselves communists, God said, there's, not, there's none of them that doeth good. You can't really do good without Jesus. Did you know that? You can struggle at it, but you can't make it. You can make resolutions a mile high. You can't keep them without the power of God. You have to have the bondage of sin broken, and Christ is the breaker of the bondage of sin. I want to tell you four or five things about the blow of communism against immortal souls. And the number one is communism is aggressive. Number two, communism is bloodthirsty. And number three, communism is slavery. Number four, communism against its own people. 
They have no love for anybody. And five, communism is a demonic deception. So we wish to, to deal with those five aspects of them coming against the immortality of man. You, you, you can't imagine how it feels in your heart to look straight in the eyes of a man and says he doesn't believe God exists. If you never looked into the eyes of a, of, a, of a complete atheist, you don't know what to mean. Rather than eyes, he's got holes in his head. Empty holes in his head. He has no background. He has no flash in his eyes. There's a dullness there. If you ever see a real atheist look into his eyes, you'll see no brilliance there. It's dull because his insides are dull. It takes the light of heaven to brighten your eyes. What many Americans do not realize, but I know that we do here, if you'll carry the word to the others. There was never a time, neighbors, when our country needs good information more than it does right now. I tremble for our country. We don't have enough people like you. There was a time when I was growing up that I knew that when an issue came up, the majority of Americans would, would say the right thing. I knew it. That there would be a few kooks, but I knew that the majority of Americans would, would vote right. And it didn't worry me about American voting. That day's gone. Amen. It worries me on the local level, the state level, and the national level. And so that's the reason God's good people are going to have to be alert and everything that's against immortality, we're against it. Yes. I prophesy that Russia will become more aggressive and not less aggressive. Changing rulers in Russia has nothing to do with their aggressiveness. All the peace overtures that they put out, I want you to know that they're simply there to deceive people. They're not a part of their real policy. It only gives them more time to consolidate their evil in order to grasp again that which does not belong to Russia. In the past 60 years of Bolshevik history and communist history in Russia, Russia has been constantly on a global march to establish a Bolshevik world, you got to know that, a Bolshevik world. If you think Russia's satisfied anywhere, at any time, you're wrong. Until the last human is under her heel, not walking beside her as a companion. I don't know how many communists they have in Russia today. They used to boast that they only had between three and six million and the whole nation of over 250 million that rule the land. I don't know. Until the last human is under her heel and the last one who resists her is dead. Communism will try to destroy anyone that rises up against her. Bolshevik Russia wins when she can without war. But she will fight and she will fight whether it's in a diplomatic area in the United Nations, Amsterdam, Holland, with the World Court, Geneva, Switzerland, Paris. She will fight anywhere on the diplomatic level. Anywhere she can, she can win without war, she will debate. But don't ever count out the fact that she's ready to fight because you admit Bolshevism. It'll die. I can't ever forget when I was preaching through China and a little Chinese man walked up to me and said, we're going to win. I said, who's we? He said, communism. I said, no, you're not. Yeah, he said, we're going to win China. And I said, no, you're not. I said, why? He said, I've been in your Christian churches 
says, all you ever give is 10%. He says, we give 100%. He says, we're going to win. And I, I looked at him with this funny little grin on his face. And I said, there's some of us that give 100%. He said, not enough. We're going to win. And they did. Two or three years later, they did. They took the whole nation. I believe that we as Christians are going to come to the point of totality and not partiality. Amen. We're going to come to the point that we really believe in what we believe and not just think we believe in it. Russia wins what she can at a peace table. When she can't, she wins the rest of it at war. Russia is willing to arm any gangster on the face of this earth if he will cause insurrection in any democratic society. The whole of Latin America is being tormented by communist gifts today. Most of it not coming directly from Russia, but from the satellites of Russia given to them. Bolshevism has been behind all of the upheavals of our time. I'm sure we don't pay enough attention to it. <laughs> when my wife and I were recently in Africa, we noticed you don't have the same news they have. Their news is of all the revolutions that's going on in Africa when you can't even pronounce the names of the places they're going on at. In Africa, they are consumed with African news. And wars are going on all over that continent. If you listen closely, they had it today and they had it last week. They're having them down there. But America doesn't listen closely. But Russia's causing it. Communism is causing it. Now right by us in Central America, Castro from Cuba and other peoples have armed men that stood up and even knocked Nicaragua out. What you're going to have to know in this country, <laughs> this year, I've been an overseas man for 50 years. I'm, I'm not new at this business. Ever since I can remember on the, on the world scene, which I've been on for 50 years, you could have had a revolution anytime you wanted to in the third world countries. If you give them some guns, they've always wanted to shoot. Now they've got somebody to give them the guns. It's communism. And you'll have to make up your mind this way. Can you put up with a bad regime? Are you going to destroy that and take a totalitarian one? That's America's problem. We, we will criticize, and I won't name the countries, that the regime may not be good, but it's a thousand times better than, than communism. And if you don't believe it, make a trip to Cuba and find out. Go to Vietnam today and find out. But your world press don't help you much in that line. They, they, they seek, if they can, to destroy all the friends of America. Bolshevism is bloodthirsty. Russia is deeply involved in Poland to make sure that she does not lose Poland. Poland has to eat from her hand every day. Millions of Poles would like to be free from communism. They have no choice. They don't have any guns to use. Their masters in the Kremlin says you're here stuck forever until God sets them free. The world was shocked when Russia invaded Afghanistan a few years ago. And to this very date, there are thousands of Afghans still fighting against communism in that country. They lay down their lives fighting for their own freedom, their own country. But Russia's still there, big and strong. She will subject that country to the most humiliating poverty, poverty, starvation, to the most humiliating privations in every way. She'll do anything she possibly can to let them know that Russia rules the world. And the rest of us are just talking about it. 
Russia's meddling in almost every country in Africa. She's meddling there, seeking to bring down any partially democratic regime and establish a totalitarian regime under the dictates of Moscow. Russia is supporting Syria and the PLO to fight against Israel. Not yesterday, not just today, but every day with no let up. She has decided within her own heart to destroy Israel because she does not understand spiritual phenomena. God, God loves the land of, called the Holy Land. It's where the Bible was born. It's where the Savior walked. It's where the prophets lived. It is a holy land under God. Russia will always support anybody who will stand up and become antagonistic toward the land that God loves because Russia hates God, hates the Bible, hates Christian, and hates the land where Jesus walked. Amen. September number 1, 1983, a Korean commercial jetliner was shot out of the sky by a Soviet uh, interceptor. in the Soviet airspace outside of Japan. All 269 people aboard the jet, including 61 Americans, died. I want to tell you something. A few years ago, you'd have had war over that. 61 innocent Americans riding in a plane. Yeah, that's Pearl Harbor for you, you know. And Americans died. Many NATO countries ban air traffic to Moscow. That's a tap on the finger gentle little tap. That their capitals in protest against Russia. They've all gone back. It's all finished. Russia still controls areas which she once overran, such as Cambodia, Ethiopia, Vietnam. She is still not satisfied. Her leaders have screamed that they will ultimately bury American democracy and crush the free world. That is what they hope to do. I'm only trying to show you that your immortality is great. God made you to live forever. Bolshevism stands at the other end of that and says, I will destroy you. I will hate you. I will take every freedom that God gave you away from you. And I will make you a slave. And God did not make man to be a slave to anybody. God made man to stand up tall and to walk free in the power of God. Under communism, the world's greatest prison camps exist today. And they do not diminish in any form, but they do increase all the time. You just would have seen the program last, uh, last Saturday. I hope some of you did at least. You would have seen how the prison camps are still being filled in that land. Totalitarian governments have labor camps. I understand that they only have 6% of the population of planet Earth who live in a free society. Uh, that, that 6%. Uh, would have to do with those who live absolutely in a free society. There are some partially free countries on the face of the earth that are not entirely free. But only 6% of the total population of the world really lives free. And, and thank God, <laughs> we're the major part of it right here. You, we can all thank God that we're part of that 6% of human beings that live in an area of freedom of thought, freedom of living, that God has given us this freedom because we have seen those slave labor camps and we want to say we do thank God that we are free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we were in Siberia, we saw those labor camps with our own, my own eyes, not somebody else's. They, they had pieces of carpet wrapped around them for coats. It was 70 degrees below zero when we were there. They, 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 they had pieces of bark from trees wrapped around their feet and wired on for shoes. And, and, uh, and they were human beings. They were loading the express train, taking goods into Moscow. And they were taking off food for them to eat in, in the camp. So we, we saw it. Bolshevism has never been kind to its own people. In communist Poland, the parties, the army are in conflict with the workers that they are supposed to, re to be part of. They've, the communists have always called themselves the, the workers' party. They've proven that they are not. We believe with all of our hearts that communism is a demonic deception on the face of this earth. It teaches there is no God, and we know there is a God. It teaches that man is simply an animal without an immortal soul, 
And the Word of God says in 2 Timothy 1 and 10, But now is made manifest by the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. It's Christ that has shown us how great we are, how wonderful we are, that we are actually the sons and daughters of God to live forever with God. Bless His wonderful name. It teaches that religion is the opiate of the people. But Romans 1.16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God and not the opiate of the people. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew and also unto the Greek. And so let us say that communism is one of Satan's blows against God, against the immortality of man, that communism is degrading, it is destroying, and that we as Christians believe in the immortality of man, we accept it, and we stand against every blow of the devil. We will push him back, blow by blow, and say, you are lying to the people, you are deceiving the people, you are cheating the people, and we will preach the truth, because the Word of God says it is the truth that sets us free. And Christ is that truth. I'm glad we're immortal, immortal souls. I'm glad that we're going to live forever. I'm glad that we are going to live forever with God in heaven. And that we're looking forward to the moment when this mortal shall put on its immortality. And what you see now is not what we're going to be. We're going to be glorious. And I'm, I'm ready for it. Can you say amen?